Hey guys, if you like my videos, click on subscribe and give me a like. And don't forget the bell so you can get notified of new ones. Hey guys, how's it going? Dale here. Today I have a brand new HV 15.6 inch laptop I just took out of the box. Customer wants me to do a little upgrading for him on it. Uh, it has the AMD Ryzen 7 CPU, the um, 3700U processor. It, this model ships with 12 gigabytes of DDR4 um, memory and a 256 gigabyte SSD. Today I'm going to upgrade the memory from the 12 gigabytes to 32 gigabytes to 16 gigabyte sticks. We're going to put in a new, a little higher performance NVMe SSD. It's the XPG SX8200 Pro from ADATA. They're pretty nice, pretty high rated drives. They're right up, right up there with the Samsung Evo 970s. Uh, but it's a one terabyte, so we're going to go from 256 to one terabyte and make it a little faster. Now this isn't a gaming laptop by any means. It does have the Vega 10 graphics, but not dedicated or, or discrete graphics. It is a touchscreen model. Um, but after we upgrade it, I'm going to go ahead, after I put in the new parts, I'm just going to go ahead and do a clean and fresh clean install of Windows 10, the latest version, 1909 edition. And then I'll go to HP's website and get any necessary drivers that I need. I just prefer doing clean installs. They go really quick on these laptops. Uh, it has two 3.1 A-type USB ports over here on the left-hand side. Does not have a lighted keyboard. Over on this side, you got your SD card slot, headphone jack. It does have the uh, C-type USB and an HDMI port. So I just want to do the upgrade for the customer, make it a little bit faster, a little bit nicer, and hopefully they'll like it. So let's get started. All right, guys. I flipped it over. We're going to remove the screws, which I've actually already done on this model. There's two exposed screws, one on each side, and there's uh, three screws under each one of these rubber feet, which we have to carefully remove. But again, I've already taken out the screws. I want to show you how to get these off without too much difficulty. So what I like to use is... A very thin, sharp little tool. I like to get right down and start on the edge here. This is the front of the laptop. I'm just going to carefully start it up. They're self-adhesive and they will go back on with the same adhesive. But you want to try to avoid stretching them too much, especially the one in the front. The one in the back really you don't need to worry about. You just carefully lift it off without doing too much stretching because it usually ends up a little bit longer when you put it back on you kind of have to start at one end and then just kind of push it as you go and lay it down and it should come out just fine so let's lay that out of the way do the one on the back same way just carefully carefully don't scratch it lift it up just like that like you say there's three screws under each one of these Take them all out. These two screws on the near the nearest the hinge, they are a little bit different. They're even a different color on this model. So make sure you put those back in the right holes. They're just a little heftier than the other screws because of the hinges. So now that we've got it ready to open up, I'm going to start on the top side. And I usually use little plastic spudger tools like these you can get online. There are a dime a dozen. Or if you have some other tool that works good, that's fine. Just don't use metal tools so you don't leave nasty tool marks. So I'm going to start right along the side over here on this seam and just gently slide my tool along. Don't want to pry up too hard. Kind of just be patient work it up. You can hear it popping up which is good. I'm going to do a little on this side. Just don't want to poke any long tools in there and damage something inside. <clears throat> and uh, I use a number zero Phillips screwdriver, magnetic tip, that way you're not dropping screws. So 
put that on your list of tools to use. So now I'm going to close the lid, flip it back over, and you can see it's we got a good start to it here. But don't just rip it off because along the back there sometimes you've got to use a different tool to kind of bring it up without damaging anything. You can see how there, there, you just got to be careful. Don't pry it too quick. And just like that. So there, we got the bottom cover off. And here's our two sticks of RAM. We have an 8 gig stick, a 4 gig stick, a total of 12. We're going to bump it up with two 16s to 32. Here's our little um, 250, I believe 256 SSD. We're going to put the big XPG SX8200 Pro in there from ADATA. These are awesome drives, NVMe drives. But before I do anything, I am going to take the time and take the screws out. I'm going to pop the battery loose so I'm not dropping any screws on here and killing something. So we got one, two, three, four, five screws to take out. Um, and again, just be careful you don't drop these screws on the motherboard before you get the battery out. It's all plastic over here, so you know that's good. I kind of pull the screws on the screwdriver away from the motherboard so you should be good then I'll just take my little tool here carefully lift it up and just slide it back <clears throat> and then as an added precaution let's open it up just a little bit get a hold of that thing yeah and carefully lift it I'm gonna hit the power button a couple times and hold it that way everything's discharged so I'm going to take out the uh, M.2 drive over here. There's one screw holding it into the slot right here. We'll need the screw to put the new one back in. So there's that. I'm going to put the new NVMe drive in here. Make sure it goes in firmly. <clears throat> Back, back in the hole. Make sure it goes in all the way, which it did. I'm going to pop out these two RAM modules over here. Get our brand new memory sticks and put in there. All right, now I, I did make note when I picked this cover off, there's a whole row of ventilation hole here. It's almost right over top of the MVM, NVMe drive. They do get a little warm. They do give you a heat, heat sink to put on there, but I've done so many of these without using the heat sink. I haven't had any trouble. Um, if anything's gonna get really hot, it would be your controller. Um, if you're doing very long, sustained, heavy loads on the, on the SSD, maybe but in a confined area like this especially with ventilation holes um, I've always been comfortable not using the heat sink every situation is different but generally I don't have any issues with heat this isn't a high-end gaming computer or anything like that just for normal home use um, everyday tasks you're not going to have any trouble so we got everything on let's put our battery back in there carefully once we put that battery in just remember you got power so let's Carefully line it back up, just like that. And I'm going to use my USB Windows 10 installation drive and get a clean install of Windows 10 going on the new NVMe drive. I have lots of other videos that show the whole process from start to finish, but we're just going to boot from it, start the install. Once I'm in Windows, I'll get all the Windows updates and I'll go to 
manufacturer's website and get any other important drivers, maybe like chipset drivers, sometimes even video drivers, touchpad, that kind of thing. Usually Windows 10 takes care of the important stuff, but some, some of these newer models, there's going to be stuff you're want, going to want to get. The Intel stuff usually is a good idea to get. If you're installing a driver that's older than one already installed, it, it should let you know. So let's get this battery back secure. <clears throat> you can see how, <clears throat> excuse me, you can see how handy a magnetic screwdriver can be doing this. So everything looks good. Our bottom pan back on. And there is no place over here to, I shouldn't say no place, but I haven't been able to locate a kit to put a two and a half inch drive. There is a connector on the motherboard for a two and a half inch SATA drive. But finding these caddies and stuff from HP is, is almost impossible. I don't really see any holes here to mount one. So let's not worry about that. We got, we got a one terabyte M.2 NVMe high performance drive in here. We're gonna be just fine. So I'm gonna go around and gently snap it back on. Be careful squeezing it because you got your screen under here. Don't squeeze too hard on the lid. Just kind of get it started here, especially along the back. And I'm going to go ahead and open it up. I will put all the screws back in, of course, when I'm done. I usually wait to the very end to do that, just in case. Save me a little bit of time taking all the screws back out. And the rubber feet on and off on and off so there it looks nice and secure I will put the screws and the rubber feet back on but when you put this front rubber foot on like it said when you when you put it on get in here and you start at oop, wrong side sorry start at one end just line it up and then just kind of drag your finger like this to keep from stretching that way and end up with a quarter inch extra down there so if you do it like that, just kind of drag it gently like this as you go. It should come out perfect. I've done tons of these. And that little trick works. Let's carefully open it back up. Uh, put my flash drive in here. All you got to do is down the Windows 10 Media Creation Tool from Microsoft. It's free for the 8 gigabyte or larger flash drive it'll create the bootable drive with all the windows 10 on it and this this again this is brand new there's no data involved so i don't have to worry about customer data that's why i'm going to do a clean install so i'm going to go ahead and turn it on and it should just default to that and boot right off of the flash drive sometimes a little bit of a delay when you put new ram in it's reading the RAM and deciding the speed and all that. And this is normal. It's to reboot the system because there's been a configuration change in there in the BIOS. There it goes. So we're going to choose, in this case, the United States. I'm going to click install now. Sorry about the reflections in the screen, guys. I'm running off a of battery right now, so. But yeah, once we get this set up with the 32 gigs of DDR4 and the one terabyte NVMe drive, get Windows, all the updates and drivers, and being a Ryzen 7, it's gonna run really, really good. So we're gonna accept the license agreement. We're gonna click next. I'll choose custom and right here's our brand new SSD ready to go click next and now it's going to start installing all right so like I said guys um, have fun with the upgrade you can use any size SSD you want or any amount of memory you can put 16 20 24 32 whatever um, and any size SSD you want or any brand, but these A-Data XPG drives are really nice. This customer wanted a little, little higher performance drive, so that's what they got. So go check out some of my other videos. Don't forget to subscribe, and I appreciate you all watching. Have a great day and a good holiday weekend.